like it's looked before. We want to assign a memory bit as our touch property, basically, to, to allow us to go. So I'll go on the drop-down list and select my MB4, which is my nav to screen 2, and then hit OK. So you can see also there's a little bit, there's an image here of a positive transition contact, which is essentially what we're doing. So the positive transition of our button press, MB4, um, is going to enable our jump condition, and we're going to go to the display that we choose. Uh, same, same process as before. You click anywhere in the white space here. You get the little browse button. And then I click the square. Now I have the option to, s to select which screen I want to go to. I'm going to pick screen 2 in this case and hit OK. So that's, that's really all that you have to do to be able to, to jump between screens. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of different, uh, you have up to 16 different jump conditions you can do. So you can jump to 16 different screens via the HMI here. If for some reason you do need more, you can always implement it with a ladder code as well. So it's not like you're only locked to 16. You can also utilize the ladder code as well. Um, so, so we're able to have our button here to go to our screen 2. So I'll just click screen 2 now. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing. So we're on screen 2, but we want to have a, a method to be able to get back to our, our original screen. So I'll just pick the, the button here, draw that out on the screen as well. Same thing, I'll put the, ar the uh, arrows going back. And assign a touch property as well. I'll use the next available here, MB5, and call it nav to startup display. So that's the same as before. And the jump condition this time, I click, get the browse button. I will see the drop down. And we have nav to start up display. So I'll click OK. And the display window here as well. I click once on the, the white line. It opens up then the option to click the browse button. I click the browse button. And this time I'm going to select Startup Display and hit OK. So we just have the, the button, Touch Property, assigned to MB5 in this case. The HMI will automatically program here, MB5, Positive Transition. We will jump to the Startup Display. And that, that allows us to navigate between uh, multiple HMI screens, all done via the, the HMI programming portion here, no ladder code required. Are there any questions on that so far? As far as navigating between the screens, jump conditions, it's, it's OK. All right. Um, well, we'll look at the last type of or method for timers here. Uh, same as before, we'll insert a binary image switch. I'll make this one big because it's our, only going to be our one on the screen. So assign a link property. I'll use the next available, MB6 in this case, and I'll call it light output 3. And as well, the image for the zero state. I'll follow what I've been doing before with the red for the off and the green for the on. and just hit OK. So we're going to have our one big indicator light on the screen this time. Um, and we won't bother putting any any other uh, variable timers on it for this case. So we'll go to the main routine. Again, I'm just going to double click here to minimize these down so we can get more, more on my screen for you to see. And I'll put my comment with the yellow dialog box Click in net 6 will give me the, the comments window right above that net. And I'll call it timer 3. Okay, so the, the previous two methods for implementing the timer that we have used required either holding down the button or pressing the button a single time. 
But if for some reason you want a timer to just always be continuously you know, counting down for five seconds and then doing whatever it's assigned to do, whatever condition output you want to utilize, and then have it count down again uh, right away. So we're going to make a timer that's constantly counting down um, all the time. So to do that, we will use this time an inverted contact um, available under the center pane here, or also the Boolean contacts and inverted contact. So I'll place that down on the rail. And we're going to want to do our drop down and go to timer. And we'll do the, the next available, which is T2. Uh, we'll call this one two sec timer. Reset on power up. I'll check that and enter in a, a value of two seconds here as well. Hit OK. So we have an inverted contact here. We'll place a direct coil in series with that. And it's also going to be linked to our T2 or our two second timer. So what we're saying here, we're using an inverted contact. So that allows power to flow whenever the, the condition is low. So whenever the timer bit is the timer bit is low, um, it's not active, that means it's still counting down. So this net is going to allow us to be able to count down, enable, energize the, the timer here so long as it's not currently active. Um, so this, this inverted contact and then the direct coil allows us to have a timer that's, that's continuously s cycling back and forth and counting down. Um, you know, the bit goes high, it does its condition, and then we're going to just start over and do it all again. Um, so the net right below it, we want to have some, some indication that the timer is counted down. So we'll use our, our positive transition contact again, place that right onto the rail, and again, drop down. T2, so our, our two second timer, and I'll hit OK. Now, um, we'll use, in this case, a different type of coil. Uh, if you go to the Boolean menu, and then coils, uh, we've used, or we've talked about most of these before, direct inverted is just the opposite of direct. Um, set and reset we looked at previously. The last option is toggle coil. I'm going to select that and place it in series with net 7. And in this case, I'm going to select my light output 3 and hit OK. So what the toggle coil does, as you can probably guess, it basically just changes the state. We talked about the toggle built into the, the uh, binary image switch before when you click that checkbox. There's also the toggle coil that you can select, which we just placed in. And whatever the previous state is, it's just going to change that, whether it's from high to low or low to high. That's what the, the toggle coil does here. So what this timer essentially is going to be doing is um, when the timer is not, the bit is not active, Timer is going to be energized, countdown. Once the timer is finished counting down, the timer bit will go high for that single scan, which is detected by this positive transition contact. And then we're going to go ahead and toggle our, our light output. Um, and then just do it all over again with the inverted contact here. So I'm going to go ahead and download that now with the stop, download, and reset. Continue here. Okay, so we have a question about the 
the preset the timer. Uh, we'll talk about that in one second. I just wanted to show show what we have done here with this uh, with this toggle coil. So let me hop into online test mode. And I will bring up the remote access. OK, so we're on our original startup display screen. And you can see the button is now on the bottom right hand side. Once I push that, it'll bring me to my second HMI screen. And I'm not pressing anything on the screen at all right now. Um, but you can see the button is, is just toggling back and forth as per this, this timer um, coil here. And I guess one other thing I could show you too, if you, if you ever click on anywhere where it says TD whatever, whether it's a coil or a contact, when you click the yellow portion above, it will open up the timer window, which in this case we can see it's just continuously counting down from two seconds. Uh, the current time is in green. You can see the preset stays at two seconds. Um, this is where you can also enter in a new value for the timer as well if you wanted to. Um, you can do it right from online test mode. But somebody also asked about changing that from the HMI. So let me hop off online test mode and we'll go back and do that real quick. Uh, I guess we'll do it with we'll do it with our first timer. Um, so we have our preset window already in here. So open up and yes. Yes. Sorry, can you make the view of the preset value unpress it so it will make the sense of a button? I think it will be more elegant. Just a suggestion. Okay. Editing. Let's uh, do it. Okay. Thank you. Um, so in the in the option here, uh, we were seeing there's the the keypad entry. So you just have to be able to click that. And I'll just show you real quick too. If you click the the preview here, it shows you the the on-screen keyboard is going to to pop up automatically on your HMI screen. So once you once you click that, it allows you to to um, enter in the time you want. But I won't do that right here. Um, I'll just add another one for our second timer. So I'll go back and add a, a square wave here for our timer counter variable. Draw that out. And we'll change it to the preset. Link it to our timer one, which is our six second timer, which is associated with this whole second net here. And I'll pick keypad entry. Um, like I pointed out before, there's the three different keyboard types. Uh, when you have complex, I guess I didn't explain the difference, but complex allows you to have the, the hex characters on the bottom as well. Um, we don't really need that for the timer, so I'll just select simple uh, with the delete key or the backspace key are the two options you have. But it's kind of nice. It gives you a little bit bigger buttons as well. So if you have operators with, with bigger fingers, uh, having a simple keyboard just gives you a little bit larger physical button size on the controller screen for them to press. Um, and again, you can specify, I'll just put it to seconds here. Uh, it'll make it easier. So we've linked it to our, our uh, TD1, our six second timer. And I've selected preset keypad entry, simple type of keyboard, and hit OK. One second. Let's change this style to press it, to unpress it. Please. Oh, the, OK. That's what you're saying. All right. Yeah. So this will make the sense of a button, so it's more uh, intuitive. OK. Yes. Yes, you're correct. I, yep. So that's... It's just a matter of elegance. Yeah, yeah. There's the different options you can pick under style. Um, you can do flat or unpressed or press, but uh, like Emil was saying, it's easier to differentiate it, um, to have it as the unpressed, so meaning they have to push push the button. Uh, so we follow our, our other conventions. And we'll hit OK. 
drag that out. Alright, so I will download this real quick now. 